So after looking at the video, I wanted to break this up. I know that um, I said in the previous video that I was going to do this all as one, one little unit on, on graphing where we plot points and then we do a scatter plot on the same video. Um, I wanted to break it up. I, I think that I want to get your attention back on scatter plots. I'm going to treat it as a, a slightly different animal. And so here's the video on how to, how to make a scatter plot. Given the data, it's very similar to plotting. Enjoy. So a scatter plot is literally what you just did. Um, it's putting points on a graph. Generally, though, a scatter plot is related to values that are meaningful in some capacity. So let's compare, um, this is done often, let's compare years with like a, a, how numbers are changing. Uh, we can do it with population. So what's happening to Los Angeles as we move from 2010 through 2017? Uh, is the population growing? Is it shrinking? What is the population? How does it look? So let's, let's try that. Uh, let's do, I think I have internet users here. So here's some data, I think I just made it up or I might have got it from somewhere, I'm not, I don't remember. But let's say, that I have four years that's maybe five years and here's the data that I found on the number of internet users for the year that that's given <clears throat> by the way when we get to plotting it's important to understand um, or try to get what variable is depending on the other one. Uh, we call one an independent variable, a little bit later in another video, and then a dependent variable. One variable generally depends on another variable in, in scatter plots and graphing. We'll talk about that in a minute. So in this example, I want to teach you a few things. Number one, I want to teach you how to make ordered pairs. Number two, I want to teach you how to, how to create some axes. Number three, I want to teach you how to identify a dependent and an independent variable. Um, and number four, uh, I want to teach you how to, um, how to connect them with a the line. So this, this all needs to be taught in one lesson so you understand the nature of plotting with a scatter plot. the same idea. So here's, here's the first thing. How you identify your horizontal versus your vertical axis. Most of the time, we want our horizontal axis to be the independent variable, and we want our vertical axis to be the dependent variable. Now, what in the world do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, look at your, look at your, your data. If you, this is your year, and this is your number of internet users, uh, 220, let's say this was at whatever college you're at, I don't know. We're just kind of making it up. So, what depends on what? If, I, if, if you ask yourself the question, um, does 2010 depend on how many internet users you have, or did you get the number of internet users compared to what year you looked up? Uh, one of them depends on the other. You don't go, oh, hey, um, we were going along, and I have 220 internet users. It must be 2010 now. Not really. Uh, we went along and said, oh, it's 2010 now. How many internet users do I have? Do you see how... Uh, we looked up internet users for the year, not the year for the internet users. That's how you try to tell what variable is dependent and what variable is independent. The number of internet users that we are having depends on the year that we were looking up, uh, so the year that we, we were in. So you right here, the number of users depends on the year that we, we were in, X. Kind of give it away because X is our horizontal. A lot of times it happens too. No, that didn't work out too good. So I'm going to show you a few things. That, that was number one, how to pick the horizontal and how to pick the vertical. The horizontal axis should be your independent variable. It should be what the other numbers are based on. So right now, the number of internet users was based on the year it was. So our year 
in this case indicated by x, is going to be our horizontal axis. The other axis, the, the numbers that depend on what you, you're, you're given, so our, our dependent variable here is users, dependent on what year we were considering. So u is going to be our vertical axis. That's what the numbers depend on the other numbers. So u numbers depend on the year numbers in this case. Users depend on the year. Also, I really don't want to count 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 2,000. So one way that we can eliminate that is by creating this little break in our graph and saying, hey, you know what, I get that this is not uh, going to be a cons consistent scale. We're going to shorten our graph a little bit so that we don't have nothing for 2,000 units of x and also we have graph out there. That's, that's a little ridiculous. Also, this starts pretty high, so I'm going to give myself a little break along the u-axis as well. So we have years, we've got users. And then we need to make sure that we have the same scale. So we're going to create the scale. And on the vertical scale, pick something that, that's meaningful, that, that would represent this well. I probably wouldn't use uh, individual values going from 220 to 250. I might pick fives or even tens if you really want to. Fives looks like it's going to work pretty well. Um, now nah, I'm going to do it tens just because I want to. And then we're going to look at making ordered pairs. So the reason why I had you pick the axis and, and use the, the knowledge of what values are based on other values. Here, users depend on the year that was given, not the year that was given depending on the users. Uh, so we want to pick our axes first because our ordered pairs are going to relate to the axis. So we're going to do stuff like um, pick our axis and then look at what's your horizontal axis? X's. Okay. What that means is that if your horizontal axis is the x-axis, in your ordered pairs, your x values must come first. You see, that's what I told you before in, the, in, in our graphing, is that our horizontal axis in an ordered pair is always going to be your first variable. Our vertical axis is going to be your second variable. So by choosing this axis, our x-axis to be horizontal, and by choosing our, our u-axis to be vertical, we have automatically chosen our ordered pairs. We've automatically said that when you create your ordered pairs, they're going to have to be x first, then u. Now, you could do this backwards. You could pick your ordered pairs first and then let your axes follow from that. That's fine, too. It doesn't really matter as long as they go together. Your first number got to be this one. Your second number, got to be that one. Go ahead, try this right now. I'm going to go very quickly after I have you try this. Make up ordered pairs. Every one of these numbers is related, so these tables are a nice way to relate it, but it doesn't show the data very well. So let's go ahead and relate them. Make some ordered pairs. You should have five of them, five pairs of numbers that are ordered that relate to one another. Our x's have to come first. Our U's have to come second. They should be in the relationship that's given to you. Once you've done that, once you've gotten your ordered pairs where you know that your first number can be found somewhere on your horizontal axis, your second number can be found somewhere on your vertical axis, just plot them, just like you normally would. Um, since your scale is all the same, you use the same increments, all you got to do is find where these numbers are, find about where they are here. They're not going to be exact. You're not going on a, on a uh, unit scale. You're going on a five-unit scale. But let's plot them. So in 2010, we had 220. 220 users. In 2011, we had 228. Okay, well, we're kind of estimating here. We don't have our scale perfect. In 2012, we had 236. Looks like it's about there. In 2013, we had 243. 
So we're, we're making these. Notice how this still works. Your first number puts you on the horizontal axis, your second number puts you on the vertical axis, and you're mapping the relationship rectangularly. It's still a rectangular coordinate system. Kind of cool. 2013, 243. 2014, 251. So we're, we're outside of our scale a little bit. Now I want to I want to ask you a question. Um, if you were just if you were a businessman, right, and you ran an internet company and you were looking at data trends, and someone said, "Hey, here's your data. Ignore this. Just look here." Would you get a good picture of what was going on quickly, effectively, in like a five second grab? Would you get a picture of what's going on? Maybe if you're if you're pretty good with numbers, you go, "Oh yeah, our numbers are increasing. How much are they increasing? Is it increasing like this, like exponential? We get to exponential way later. Is it increasing like this, a different type of uh, well logarithmically, or is it increasing in a straight line? Those are important questions if you're a businessman. What's our growth model? Are we decreasing? Well, are we increasing at a decreasing rate? That's calculus in a little while. Are we increasing at an increasing rate? Are we increasing at a constant rate? Those are important questions. That doesn't show it. But if you were to give someone this graph and say, hey, how are we increasing? Are we increasing? It's pretty easy to see, isn't it? We know our, our years are increasing, our users are increasing. How is it increasing? Is it climbing like this? No. Is it climbing like this? No. Is it climbing, climbing in a straight line? Looks to be, we're gonna find out later on when we graph lines, how to determine that. If we were to connect them, if you miss your points, just make them bigger. It's not really very good advice. But anyhow, if we were to look at that trend, it appears to be almost, if it's not linear, it's really, really close to linear growth. That's interesting. It's really easy to see that when you graph things. So what I want you to get out of this lesson, number one is how the numbers lines interplay, how we go about making an order pair to relate two numbers on a graph, how we plot values backwards and forwards, getting coordinates from points, getting points from coordinates, and then how to make a scatter plot. Uh, th those are the big things. I hope that I showed you that in this video. Next few videos, we're gonna unpack how to graph lines. Uh, I'm gonna teach you a whole lot of stuff up front, and then I'm going to unpack it little by little as we go through the videos. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for the videos on graphing lines.